Welcome to the digital job site. In this video, I want to show how to use SketchUp to do all the math required for figuring a set of stairs. Rather than use the Make version or the Pro version of SketchUp, which need to be downloaded and or paid for, I'm going to use my.sketchup.com, which the folks at Trimble introduced last summer as a totally browser-based 3D modeling program. It's like SketchUp Make Lite. It's not quite as full featured as downloaded versions, but it's more than adequate to use as a visual construction calculator. So my.sketchup.com will get you to this screen and by clicking launch and waiting a few seconds for the browser to catch up, depending on your internet speed, you'll end up with this screen, which is the starting view into the 3D workspace. In this tutorial, I'll make a couple of assumptions. One is that the viewer is a person who knows the basics of building a set of stairs, how to cut them, and wants a quick, simple way to do the math. The other assumption I'll make is that you may not be familiar with the 3D workspace. So to get started, a couple quick things here. By holding down the scroll wheel on a three button mouse and moving around, you get this orbit motion. By scrolling the wheel in and out, you'll get the zoom function. And by holding shift, and the scroll wheel down, you'll get a pan function. I'll be using those movements to manipulate the 3D workspace. This guy's name is Josh, which we learn by going into this entity info box, and it says the selection is Josh, and there's one of them in this model. And the first thing we'll do is move Josh out of the way a little bit by using this little four-way arrow, which is the move tool. And if I hover the move tool over this red line, and move this way, Josh moves back and forth in a straight line left to right. So we'll just move Josh over a few feet to the left and get him out of the space. And by clicking and hitting the space bar, you'll be able to deselect anything you've selected. I'm gonna hide this for now with a click. And then for doing stair math, the main piece of information that's needed is the total rise of a flight of stairs. With a regular construction calculator or other methods, we take the total length and then divide it up to end up with the number of stairs so that the steps are not too tall or too short. Using SketchUp as a visual calculator, the process is the same, but it's approached a little differently. I'm going to go through these steps quickly here to show how simple this really is, and then we'll cover each step in more detail. So to do this, I'm just gonna draw a line that's going straight up in the air, and I'll go 107 and 13 sixteenths, then select the line, right click, divide and just slide this divider until I've got segments that are just under eight inches. Take one of the segments, draw another line to represent 10 inch run. Take these two lines, move and copy them, which gives a complete set of stairs. This information shows that the rise is seven and 45 64ths. The run is 10 inches. And the hypotenuse for this triangle is 12 and 5 eighths inches. And the angle of these stairs is about 37.6 degrees. And that's basically all the stair math that you need to calculate. Here it's shown visually versus as a string of numbers from a calculator that get written down. This is the run, the rise, and the hypotenuse are all simply calculated visually. So that's the caffeinated version of doing math for stairs with mysketchup.com. And now I'll go through those steps with a little more explanation and detail so that they're easier to understand. So what I'll do is take this pencil, which is the line tool, and I'm gonna scroll in and zoom in so that my pencil hovers over this right line and I'm just gonna slide along the right line here and click the mouse once, and then I'll start drawing a line. And you can see the line bounces back and forth to different colors from black to blue to green and to red if you're drawing this way. And all that is showing you is which direction the line's being drawn. And because we wanna draw a line going straight up, I'm gonna wait till the line turns blue and just drag up here a ways. If you notice in the box on the lower right, the number changes based on the length of the line. Rather than trying to hit this line and try to scroll into 
a very accurate measurement. I'm just going to wait till the line turns blue and I'll click a second time and then I'm going to type in an arbitrary total rise height and let's use an odd number to better show the capabilities of SketchUp. So I'm going to go 107 inches, hit the space bar, and then go 13 slash 16 to have 107 and 13 16 inch total rise. Now when I hit enter, the software makes that line the length that I told it to. So I'll hit the space bar to get out of the line drawing tool. And to show what we have here, I'll click this line that we just drew. You can see it turns blue. It's a different color than this blue because it's, it's a selection. It also happens to be going straight up. But we'll hit the entity info box and you can see here the length is 8 foot 11 and 13 sixteenths, which is the number we entered in inches. It just converted it to feet and inches. With a vertical line drawn to represent our total height, this is where the visual calculator part comes in. So to figure out our individual rise, all I need to do is right click on this line that's selected and slide down here to, to choose divide. Now when I hover over the line you can see these little red boxes show up and if I slow down it says okay four segments and it gives a length. As I slide this the mouse up this line the number of segments increases and the length of each segment decreases. So all we need to do for this is to come up with a number of segments that's less than eight inches which would be the maximum total rise. All I'm doing here, okay, 14 segments will get us 7 11 16. That's a decent rise for a set of stairs. So I'm just going to click now. And the whole line is still selected. Seems like nothing's changed. The length is the same because all of the 14 segments are selected. But if we click out in space and then click back on this line, it'll pick one segment. You can see that an individual segment turns blue and each one is 7 and 11 16. If you select a couple of them, It'll tell you how many are the total length of the number that are selected. So what we have now is a line that gives us visually our total rise. And I'm going to assume an individual run of 10 inches. So by taking the line tool again, little pencil, and hovering over this divided line, it starts out with a green dot and a blue dot and a green dot and a blue dot. What that is showing us that each individual line has a midpoint and an end point. So at the end point I clicked and now I'm going to drag out and I want to go in the red direction so we're going to the right not in the green or the blue direction. So when the line turns red I'm just going to drag over this direction an arbitrary amount and then hit 1 0 enter. The space bar will get us out of that. If I click this line it's 10 inches. If this line when I hit that line it's 7 and 11 16 so we can zoom in on this and by holding shift we can pan down to look at our two little line selections. So there's the individual rise and there's the individual run, which is simple enough. That gives you the basic math for the set of stairs. We can do one more line here very simply by clicking from the green dot on this line to the green dot on that line and selecting that line and that tells us the hypotenuse of our triangle is one foot five eighths of an inch. By scrolling out, I can show you another neat feature of using SketchUp as a visual construction calculator. So if I draw a box around this triangle from upper left to lower right, it selects our little rise run triangle. I'm going to take the move tool and hit control. So it's going to make a copy of this triangle and move it where I tell it to. So I'm intentionally grabbing it by this upper point, making sure there's a green circle there. And when I select it and move it. You can see that it's moving this around. And if I don't let go of it and I slide it until there's a green dot that shows me this triangle is lined up to the other one. And I've made a copy and moved it once. So when I do that I'll press enter. And then this is a cool thing about the visual construction calculator because if I type in 12x and hit enter again it makes 12 copies of that and you can see it doesn't reach all the way down so if I haven't done anything else I can still type in 13x enter and it'll make a total of 13 copies which kind of gets this stairway to the ground. And this last triangle we really don't need so I'm selecting these things down here by clicking upper right to lower left and deleting. So that gives us a set of stairs.
with those steps in place, it's pretty easy to visualize a set of stairs. If we rotate around, you can see they're up in the air. They have no thickness, but these stairs are inclined and rising. To help visualize this a little better, I'm going to use this tape measure tool. I'm going to click on this hypotenuse line or line of nosing for our set of stairs and then drag down along this line. I'm going to go 11.25 to represent how wide a 2x12 would be if we were cutting a stair jack out of a 2x12. And then I'm going to go in and use the line tool and kind of trace around this dotted line. And now that creates a flat plane for our stairs. Use the eraser tool and erase these lines so that it looks like stairs that have been notched out. And these steps aren't really necessary to do the math, but it'll help show it better here in a minute when we look at those things. So there's our board. And we're going to do one more fun thing and take this push-pull tool and we're going to move this 1.5, enter, and that makes our whole set of stairs look like a 2 by 12. You can't really do that with a construction calculator. With the stair stringer created as a 3D model, we'll go in and make some additions to it to make it a little more meaningful. First thing I'm going to do is delete these extra lines, and then we'll add dimensions in which will confirm our total rise and other dimensions that we worked with before. I'm clicking the, tall, the highest point and then a point on the ground there, and that shows us our total rise of 8 foot 11 and 13 sixteenths. We can click a couple other points here. Let's take our individual rise. We can dimension our individual run and go down here and dimension a hypotenuse. So those figures are all there. And we can even dimension the length of a piece of lumber it would take to cut this stringer out of. And get this dimension to land at an angle that shows us about 15 foot 3 and a half inches would be long enough to cut this stringer. Two other pieces of useful information that can be added to this model in pretty short order is to put a dimension for the overall run. And that's simple enough with the dimension tool. If we click a point at the top of the first rise and one at the bottom of the last rise, we get our overall run of 10 foot 10. And then to introduce a new tool, which is the protractor, and can be found under this tab with the little protractor tool, it bounces around in different planes of orientation. We want it to be in this green plane. I want to click on the tip of one of these stairs, click in the red horizontal direction, and then rotate up to hit the point of another run. And you can see in the value control box in the lower right corner that that angle is 37.6 degrees. Hitting the space bar gets me out of the protractor tool. Having the stair angle can be useful for figuring a miter cut for a handrail, say, and I've drawn another guideline here. Just add a couple pencil lines to this. Let's see, 12 inches and let's go 36 inches. Then pick these two lines and grab the offset tool under this tab. Click those two lines. I'm just going to draw down here two inches and zoom in and connect the ends. And that creates a face with a face for a handrail. can grab the push-pull tool, pull this handrail out a little bit to make it look like one. 1.5 inches. Then we can zoom in and figure the miter angle with the protractor tool by indexing it to this uh, intersection point in the green plane click at the intersection point, click on an edge, and just swing up 90 degrees, and then do that process again starting at the intersection point, now starting on this 90 degree line, 
and pivoting over to the end point again. That gives us 18.8 .8 degrees, which is half of the stair angle. Kind of a handy feature to help visualize what's needed to build the stairway. There's quite a bit more information that can be pulled out of a SketchUp model like this, but I wanted to keep this video short as an introduction to my.sketchup.com to give some ideas about its potential use. I'll do a follow-up video that shows how this model can be enhanced and manipulated a bit to change up information when the total rise changes or a total run changes, if there was a winding stair, for instance, and that sort of thing. So I hope you found this introduction helpful, and we'll come back to view part two. And thanks for coming by the Digital Job Site.